It really is the way. You know, yeah. There's lessons and there's lessons. I feel today was the best lessons we've done because we're able to communicate better. We're not on the clock. Have some video. Plenty of time to yeah. bounce back and forth. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? All right, day two of the Crush 100. Be Better Golf Crush 100 where I'm practicing like a pro for 100 days. Day one was an extremely challenging, emotionally frustrating day where I practiced for three and a half hours and in fixing my backswing, I somehow developed this shank and it was it's really bad. So anyway, day two, we're on to the next thing. So the only way to get out of a slump is you gotta keep shooting, you gotta keep, you know, you gotta keep moving forward. And it's not just gonna go away on its own. Uh, day two, now I'm going over, I'm headed from Long Beach to Palos Verdes to go play Trump National. I've been playing there a lot because I've been taking on a, a role. My friend is the head coach of a college golf team out there that plays at that course. So uh, he is in Mississippi for a couple of months, uh, Michael. Who well, I think I'm gonna have him do some vlogs on the channel. While he's in Mississippi, I'm like acting, acting assistant coach, and I give him a few pointers or whatever. But mainly, I just play with them and, and get them motivated to to keep playing and uh, you know basically like a chaperone almost. So, uh, which great situation? I mean, imagine uh, Trump National is like. It's the best, it's, it's like one of the best golf courses I've ever played. It's also extremely difficult. It's really, really difficult. Because it's par 71, but it's 7,200 yards, 7,240, I think, something like that. A lot of times it's very windy and it's so narrow. It is so narrow. The best I've ever did that, I've ever done there is four lost balls. Um, playing around with uh, only four lost golf balls. So, uh, and I think 84 is the best I shot there. Uh, it's, it's so so difficult. Plus, you know, I got the shanks right now. So uh, I was thinking yesterday, I was thinking like, I can't play golf tomorrow. <laughs> and then uh, the, the student, uh, one of the one of the kids was like, hey, you, uh, can we play tomorrow? Or, you know, can you roll tomorrow? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So. Who the heck knows? Golf is very difficult to understand sometimes. I'm doing things that, I mean, if you remember during the the, the first lockdown of the pandemic, what was that, like March, April time? I was raising up in my backswing a lot. I fixed that. I mean, that is totally, almost totally gone from my swing. It's really looking good now. And, uh, and I don't even have to think about it. And also like my inside takeaway and, and backswing issues, like I've really made that a lot better. But it, like, it's almost like with this golf swing of mine, it's almost like there's a demon in my golf swing and you work on it a little bit and like you're kind of just poking at it and, and it's sleeping. And it doesn't really know that you're, you know, you're trying to get rid of it, you're trying to kill it. And then uh, you start really working hard at it for a while and it starts rousing. And then like you start doing harder work on your golf swing than you've ever done in your life. And all of a sudden this monster wakes up and it starts thrashing around like crazy. And, uh, it, and it expresses itself in like something really bad, which is these shanks. So hopefully the shanks are simply just the death throws of my old bad swing. So I hit the course. On the range, I hit the ball better right off the bat. Yeah, I hit, in a range session, very brief, like probably about 20 balls, I hit two shanks rather than 100% shanks, which is the last time I was hitting the ball the day before. It was like that. So that was good. And then I played, and I actually played pretty well. I, I considering anyway. Uh, not where I want to be even close, but but considering what I thought I, I played pretty well I control my ball pretty well. I didn't lose any balls on the front nine and then I lost uh, I lost a few on the back nine, but I didn't lose any balls with tee shots. I was borrowing Owen's driver This is Owen that you're seeing some clips of And just showing him some stuff on alignment and stuff 
And uh, so I did all right. I tied my best score for the course and um, I was able to kind of somewhat just go into play mode and get my ball around a little bit. It was actually super windy this day, come to think of it. So going from the golf course, I was gonna head over and then do a three hour lesson or a three and a half hour lesson with Paul Young, who has been my swing coach for the last like five months or so. All right, so I finished playing golf. I actually was pretty encouraged by it. Mainly I switched drivers and I used Owen's driver, the kid from Canada, and um, it's a much better driver for me. I did the same thing last time I played there, where I used uh, my friend Sim Max, and uh, I hit it with like a, a, a Diamante whiteboard shaft and a Heine uh, X, and I hit really good drives with that his, and then I hit even better drives with um, with Owen's hazardous smoke. X shaft, uh, 70 gram, so it, it was a little heavier. Um, hit it kind of low, but but like all solid. Twist face was definitely engaging as well. And so I was, I like, I didn't lose any balls off a driver today, which is crazy. Otherwise, the, the other parts of my game, not great. You know, <laughs> not very good. But I didn't shank a single ball. So as, uh, that's why like, if you're ever like I was almost thinking yesterday like I shouldn't even play golf I should just practice no you should always play you should always play I used to have a friend that would um, never want to play because he would it would feel like he would if he played bad uh, he would have it would be a setback for all of his practice but you got to get out there and play because it's that's what it is. that's what it all comes down to eventually it's not a driving range game so, but it doesn't count as like a pro day of practice if all I'm doing as part of my crush 100 days, if all I'm doing is playing golf. So I'm not just playing golf. I'm gonna eat lunch now. And then immediately after lunch, I have like a, a three hour lesson scheduled with with Paul Young, who has been uh, coaching me recently in the last like four months. We've been meeting up for like, like every once a week, like every Wednesday for like 50 minutes. And he said to me, the other, like just last week, he was like, you know, this isn't doing it. He's like, I need to see you a lot more. So he's like, I really wanna have like an intense session to really, you know, get our hands around making some improvements here. And then uh, he also wants to see me like more often during the week too. So, I mean, he's, he's a really cool guy. He's really willing to do anything to, uh, to make me better. It's not, it, which is cool. All right, I'm here at Hartwell Golf Course. This is where Paul teaches. We've usually been meeting up at a different place, but this was the best place to go if we wanted to get like three hours or so of training in. So this is Paul's setup here over on the range at Hartwell, and we've been working for a little while at this point, and Paul wanted just to show me one of his students' swings. He, Paul teaches Nick Cantley, Patrick Cantley's brother, who's also a professional golfer and has just like an amazing swing. There's a vlog coming up on the channel recently with it, so we're just talking about the differences here. So he kind of at the very top has a little set move, like I have a little set move, but, but he, he's staying right there. It doesn't set, like my set goes over and off, basically over with the hands, off, laid off with the shaft. He's just kind of sinking straight down. Like almost like he's pulling a cord straight down before he attacks. He's not like he's not just at the top and going straight for the ball. You know, he's like attacking. Yeah, let's let's just start with the pace. But what I've been thinking about when you make a longer swing, this is a real sort of wide open session. Then. So I'm thinking yeah. if we can get you hit some shots with swing guide where we've set you earlier. Okay. We've set you earlier here, and then we just, as opposed to that, that's got to influence what's going on here. Like the, the thing of the swing guide is like you're here, and you from here to here to here, there's like real no change in that relationship. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Given that some thought. What club? 
Let's just start with a sandwich initially here and we'll work through it. Okay, so if you go to the middle here, just as you could do it. You're saying it already is touching, it should already yes. be touching here. Yes. So not here, there. We want it going earlier. Yes. Earlier. Yes. Right. See the face. The face is surrounded. For sure. Cool. Interesting. And there will be good for you this on the forward swing as well to try and get it reattached. I'm not overly worried about that right now. Then rotate. Finish it. That's all that's going on up here. So once the swing guide's on this sandwich here, one of the drills Paul wanted me to have to do is get it connected. By the time my left arm is parallel to the ground on the way back, he wanted me to have the swing guide connected to my left forearm and then make like basically three down swings, three transition, and then attack the ball and hit it like that. And that changed uh, things quite a bit. One of the things I noticed when, when I look back at the footage, see how my knees are always so wide apart at the finish, and that's something that more recently uh, has to be addressed, just because it, it shows that I didn't get my weight left at all. It kind of stayed, stayed there. But here, I'm just trying to quiet down that wobble at the top that I usually have, and just get that working more straight. And you can see that looks real steep when I'm practicing it. It's because usually the hands go over the plane and then in order to combat that, I've learned to over shallow the shaft. So feeling a little bit that way is just fine for me. But there was a shank there. So that's something that we're gonna have to, to work out. And Paul just got a new iPad and it's really helping figure things out too. Okay, one more. Drill or swing? Uh, swing. Interesting. Interesting. I can't believe that would help us. So that general shape kind of set the tone for the day and then made a really interesting revelation that I was turning immediately. And really, in the golf swing, I don't think you turn right off the ball. I think good players are kind of tilting first or doing a certain thing first and then turning late. So I was, started hitting the ball way better when I started changing kind of the organization of my backswing to go tilt, then turn. And that was the thing that then got the hands to get more straight down the line at first and then get deep so that I could attack it and stay on plane the entire time. 
So it was, it was like super interesting. So it, it, it's not something that we could have learned in like an hour. And then here's Paul's golf swing. He's been working on it as well. Paul used to be on the European tour and then he played on the Hogan tour, which was like the Corn Ferry tour in America before he started teaching. He knows like a lot of the a lot of the household names from like Ryder Cup and stuff like that. And uh, had not been playing much golf at all, and is just now getting back into it. Him and I have been playing quite a bit recently, and it's been a it's been a lot of fun. And he is about the best ninety to one hundred and thirty yard wedge player. I've ever seen so just seeing him hit wedges is just a lot of fun but he there is a uh, quite a bit that he's working on in his own game but uh he's just we've so we've we've been working together like I've been just like giving him a general another pair of eyes or whatever like, I don't necessarily want you to hit a fade you know just want you to hit, like maybe a, a little block That's all right, here with Paul, and you guys just saw we did about two hours and 45 minutes of uh, real quality work. Appreciate it, Paul. I think we, um, what did you get out of today? And then and then going forward, what, what do you think the direction should be? Well, the main thing was getting the right hand in position with the grip, you know, getting that in a more neutral position versus it tends to get a bit strong, which is really helping the club face. And then the start of the backswing, the hand path, feeling more outside using the swing guide to set your wrist correctly in the middle of your swing, which really helps grow up the club face. It gets the shaft more vertical. It gets the it. shaft definitely more vertical, and then it gives you a great opportunity to shallow the shaft versus arms being too deep, deep and coming forward with the shaft. So yeah. really just sort of reversing your pattern. Right. Really reversing it is what we're trying to do. Yeah, so the three things were really, the, or the parts were really feeling light and a little bit tilted, just a little bit. But like the wherever the shaft feels lightest, which mm -hmm. is basically like yeah, it feels like forty five degrees, point. yeah, mm -hmm. lifting from the mm -hmm. lightest point. Which really helped uh -huh. change the club face position and we saw less shots going to the left. And, the, sure. and in that lightness so you get the shaft kind of more vertical with the face still neutral. And the real key point today was saving the turn. Right. So saving basically I haven't turned at all right. to that point very much at all. Then it's turn and hit. Right, you've always yeah. tended to turn a bit too early, so that's why the arms in the club tended to go behind you too much. Everything's behind, yeah, and then it's like behind. when I want to hit it, they go back out. Yeah, you've got no real option. You've used up all the space, your arms are too far behind you, the only space is forward, and this way you kind of tend to come forward with it. So then the drill to, to keep on track is is where basically I feel zero turn to, mm -hmm. to left arm parallel, mm -hmm. shaft is basically vertical, mm -hmm. and then I make a, a nice big turn and hit the ball. Then with my knees touching, which we'll get more into later as we get into improving impact. We did do one face on today and uh, and impact looked like right at about zero. So we'll get it into the plus category in a little bit. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, but the moment yeah. really staying focused on back swing, trying to change your path, which, you know, some of the swings today were actually very good. Not yeah, bad, were very good. Yeah, with, especially with the with the short clubs. And I noticed with the short clubs, I'm OK with the, the right hand grip being on top. And then as it gets to like a four iron or even like seven iron, but then especially with four iron, more and more, I want to get behind the shaft this way. And then that gets me flinging that way. Very so, much so, yeah. very much so. Yeah. So, you know, although physically it's not a very dramatic change with your right hand position, feel wise, it is a dramatic difference. Yeah, because it gets it heavy this way. And then when I'm heavy this way, I want to sling that way. If it's right on this way, then it's more neutral up and then but yeah, certainly, yeah. you know, a detail there that really helps change the club face. And then we did start to see a lot less shots going to the left, which has been your general history, hitting shots to the left. Yeah, yeah. But all in all, I felt we've made some bloody good strides forward today. Yeah, it was good. And it was sure. uh, Paul and I have been working together now like four months or so, 45 minutes or so at a time. And, and Paul was just saying, like, now let's let's put like a good like tour style session in which is what we did today. So, it really is the way. You know, yeah. There's lessons and there's lessons. I feel today was the best lessons we've done because we were able to communicate better. We're not on the clock. Have some video. Plenty of time to yeah. bounce back and forth. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? Right. And just, you know, trying a few different things, but not, yeah. you know, not on the stopwatch. I'm really able to have the time to have good communication. You know? Well, yeah, two, two, th two or three times when I did hit a shank, it was like, okay, well, let's see that shot. Yeah. Let's see what it was. <laughs> Okay, it's not like the end of the world. It's just, you know, a small thing and then get on with it. Cool.
Yeah, very much so. I thought it was a good day's work today. Very good. much so. Positive. All right, so that was day two of this Crush 100 Challenge. Thanks for watching, everybody, and stay tuned. And go to BeBetterGolf.net to see all these videos in full. Cheers. Cheers. And you can find Paul right here at Hartwell or in the description there is his email. Bye.